What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how you can beat a faster DB. So we're going to be talking about some of the things you could do to get some separation when you got a DB who's a little bit quicker than you, who's a little bit faster than you. Maybe he's got a couple extra steps, not necessarily that you're a slow wide receiver, but a DB who's quick and who is fast and athletic, okay? So we're going to be focused on the key things you can do to win on a fade route, dig route, corner route, post route, and all the above, okay? So I hope this video gives you guys some value. This is a highly requested video, so I appreciate all the feedback you guys always give. I really appreciate it. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to get more explosive off the line, create more speed and energy at the top of your breaks, check out that very first link in the description for a two-month-long wide receiver gym training bundle, okay? So it's two months of specific exercise to help you with more explosion at the top of the route, speed off the line of scrimmage, improve your grip strength, and all the above. All the specific things wide receivers need to be doing in the gym to improve their game. So check out that very first link in the description, fellas. Hope we get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So first route we're going to be looking at here is a fade route, right? So this, this receiver does a pretty good job of getting this DB off balance, but DB's obviously a little bit quicker and he's got great recovery speed. So we're going to be talking about one of the things you could do on a fade route to win on a ball. So at the next level, right, everybody's going to be fast. Everybody's going to have quickness. This is going to be a situation if maybe you're going up against a DB who's got a lot of speed that you're going to be in quite often, right? So if you got to run a fade and you got to stretch the field, it's just a straight up go. You're just trying to run. This DB is going to be kind of stride for stride with you, usually when he's a freakishly fast guy, right? Maybe you're like a 4'6'40 guy and you're going up against a 4'3'40 guy. This is going to be a situation you're in more often than not, right? So now, when we're here, you guys want to make sure the main key that I think in this case is you want to be late with your hands, right? So this is like more of a one-handed catch, right? And this is a situation that you guys definitely can work on because there are times where a DB is going to be grabbing your arm. He's going to be getting physical. Your inside arm is going to be occupied. So you got to be able to... <clears throat> got to be able to throw up your outside arm and be able to make a play, right? So that's one of the things you can work on on your own time. You don't ever want to work on that when there are coaches around. But the main key that remains consistent, whether it's a one-handed catch or you're going with two hands, is that we are late when I throw this hand up there. I'm not throwing this thing up super early to allow this DB to play my hands, right? So this DB, his eyes are in the backfield. He's looking at this ball when really he should be playing this receiver and playing his hands. But you've just got to get in that good habit of being late over the top with your hands, right? There are a lot of times, especially down here in California, right? There are a lot of talented receivers that come out, you know, to, to train with me, train with our guys, you know, and then you get guys who are just regular high school receivers. And the biggest difference between all those guys that I've been able to see when it comes to catching is this ability to have late hands, right? Because they play at a higher level of competition. You get the schools like Bosco, Modern Day, they're going up against good high school DBs every single week. So they don't get as much separation as a guy who's maybe at, like, if you, let's say you're at the top school and you're playing like a, the last division in the, t- last division in the state, you're going to be getting five yards, six yards of separation every time, or at least you should. Good, right? So you're going to be thrown in this situation right here more often than not, and you've got to be able to win. You've got to be able to have late hands over the top, track that thing, and all the way to that catch. Your eyes follow it to those hands, and that's how you guys can be consistent when a DB's faster than you. When you've got to make that play downfield, and he's stride for stride with you, hip to hip, you've got to bring something to the table, and being late with those hands is exactly what you got to have. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great job making this catch. Great job being late with those hands to make a play. Okay, So now we're going to be looking at this route here from Travis Kelsey. Now, I guarantee it, I don't know how fast Kelsey is 40 wise. I don't know how fast this DB is 40 wise, but I can guarantee you that this DB is probably a little bit quicker than him. Just based off of size, just based off of how he plays, right? That this DB is probably faster than Kelsey. So we're going to be talking about how you guys can actually sell routes, how you guys can actually get this DB to um, to commit to a break and be able to get separation when he's quicker than you and when he has that quick recovery speed like we were talking about in the previous clip. So let's watch this thing full speed. So you see how Kelsey comes off, swats him by, drops those hips violently, then he's able to get out of this break. So when we have a violent Violent change of direction that comes from one thing, right? That violent change of direction comes from committing your shoulders, hips, and like entire body language to the break. Because what this DB selling a route is not about selling the route fast. It's about selling the route like committed. You want to be committed to the route. You actually want to commit with your own speed. You actually want to commit with your pad level, your body language to get this DB to overcommit and to get him to jump this thing. Because if he can jump this route and he commits to it, that's what gets a separation if I have that good change of direction, right? So Kelsey has no indicators on this route. An indicator is what will get a DB to slow down and he has that quick recovery speed and then you think, oh, he's just faster than me, right? Oh, he's just he's just a quicker guy than me. That's why he made this play. I can't, I can't beat faster guys. That should never be the thought process. You always do something 
something wrong, that's what allows the DB to recover. It's not about what the DB does right. It's about what the receiver does wrong, right? So if I'm committed to this break, like you can see with Kelsey here, hips towards the break, shoulders toward the break. He doesn't start chopping his feet. He doesn't start slowing down, raising his pad level straight up in the air. He doesn't start opening up his hip and shoulder before he drops his hips. He's able to drop his hips just violently. There's a violent drop right there, and you see how low he's able to get. This sudden change of direction will get you at least a step or two with the DB, and especially when you're a bigger guy. Let's say this DB was able to recover right now, and he's right on this hip. From a quarterback perspective, you're open. I'm going to put the ball right here. I'm going to throw you open, and you're going to make a play. You did your job. So as a bigger guy, you got to be ready for those catches in traffic, especially if you're slower than DBs, right? Or even if you're just maybe, even if you're a fast receiver, but this DB's quicker, you got to be prepared for those catches in traffic. But just a yard or two is huge, especially when we're down in the red zone and things get real tight, the formations get tighter, the field gets closed down, so everything becomes a lot, sm lot smaller windows, right? Especially for a quarterback. So we got to make sure that I am able to sell routes correctly, sell with my speed, not necessarily being faster than the DB, but sell with my speed, my body language, no indication. Indicators and I have a quick change of direction and that quick change of direction right here that violent drop turns into explosion and that explosion turns into acceleration into this route right so it's all technique based anybody that asked me that question about oh what if the DB's bigger what if the DB's faster what if he's stronger what if he's more physical than I am it all comes down to technique that's the thing that you guys got to be able to do when you're trying to create space in any case you guys got to understand that your um, technique your route running how you do things is what's going to get you separation that's it that's what it comes down to the other things like working on explosiveness, working on all those exercises like we talked about in the beginning of this video in our gym program, that translates to on the field play. When you guys have that, when you guys know what to do, now it's just about fine tuning the details, which is what's working on that stuff in the gym is going to do it. Working on your route running is going to be able to do. So that's what will get you space against those quicker guys. Now we're going to be talking about after we watch this full speed, how you guys can get separation on a DB when it's press and when you got to run like a corner or a post. So now, Big situation here. I don't know what type 40 times these guys run. I don't know how fast this receiver is. This receiver might be faster. But based off of just their size, he looks a little bit bigger. DB looks smaller. He should be faster. This DB should be a little bit quicker than this guy. So we got to understand what I can do in this case. So let's watch it full speed. So we go split release, shoulder reduce, restack, throw a rocker step, and then I'm able to get some separation on this route. So now, big thing here is that this restack is what gets you space against a quicker guy. Because when you restack, and he is trailing you, right? So what he does to restack, we'll get to that in a second. When he splits, when he does this split release, what does he do with his inside shoulder? Shoulder reduces, right? So when I shoulder reduce and then I can rip back underneath and I'm able to get back over the top on this route, where's this DB going to be looking? He's going to be trailing you and watching your hips. They call that a restack, right? So when he's watching your hips like this and looking here, he, you're dictating the pace of the route. You're dictating the speed. He's going off of what you're doing. You're not. He's not going to just run past you. He, he will not do it. He will not just run past you because you could just put the brakes on and stop. You can put the brakes on, cut underneath, or you can put the brakes on, swat him by a little bit, then run a corner. But if he, I mean, if he does, then yeah, that's what that's something that you got to do. But when you're able to restack and he's able to trail your back hip like this, you dictate the speed of the route. So you don't have to be faster than the guy. Even if he's faster than you, he can't use it. So making sure that you're able to restack on a route like this. Because when you restack, you can do pretty much whatever you want with him. I can sell with my upper half. I throw my hips to the inside. I get this little head and shoulder fake, which in turn brings my body over in this direction. I get him to stutter. Then I can get some separation. I got to run a post route. Maybe I, I just give him a quick little just one, two, and I throw my body to the inside here. Get the Or the outside, excuse me. I get this DB to jump outside. Then I break to a post. Maybe I got to run an out route. I do the exact same thing. I hit him with this rocker step. Then I round it off or break it off to the out. There's so many different things you can do when you're able to restack. So the main tip I can give you, DB who's faster, make sure that my change of direction is clean. Make sure I have those late hands, but we must, you must, you must be able to restack and be able to get back over the top of this DB because that will help you dictate the pace and dictate the speed of the route. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job using this split, shoulder reduce, get back over the top. Hit that rocker step and break back to the outside. Great route by this receiver. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I appreciate all the feedback that you guys give me in the comments below. You know, it, it helps fuel the page, and I really want to thank you guys for that because you guys are the reason why the page the way is the way it is. So, again, I really appreciate that. Feel free to leave anything in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also, fellas, two-month-long wide receiver gym training program, specific exercises to help wide receiver performance in the gym. Hope we get you guys on that soon. I'll see you guys next time.